Many modern Christians no longer understand the significance and meaning behind the symbolism of Easter, including the real significance of Palm Sunday. The palm tree is a symbol that relates to the first born divine man, as we can see with this verse from the Zohar, which connects the palm tree to Abram, otherwise known as Abraham, who is said to be from whom all the tribes of Israel are descended. Why is the righteous man compared to a palm tree? Because just as if a palm tree is cut down, it takes a long time for one to grow again. So if the world loses a righteous man, it is a long time before another arises in his place. Further, just as a palm tree does not grow unless the male be accompanied by the female, so the righteous cannot flourish save when they are male and female together, like Abram and Sarai. And we see a similar verse in the Bible. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Psalm 92, 12 to 13. But before we look into the symbol of the palm tree, first let's clarify what the Bible actually is. It's important to understand that the books in the Bible weren't meant to be a continuous, literal retelling of history in chronological order from Genesis to Revelation. The Catholic Church has just constructed the Bible in a way as to create a narrative to better suit their own agenda. The fact is that the Gospels are divine truths encoded in parables or stories written by divine souls who are symbolized by the tribes of Israel, the four creatures, the cherubim, the apostles, the four evangelists, the 24 elders, and they are symbolized by many other names too. That's why so many of these stories are similar and repeated. It's why there are multiple first sons of God besides Jesus, because Jesus is just one symbol for the firstborn divine man, otherwise known as the Christ. The Catholic Church just chose Jesus as their poster boy saviour and literally created a caricature around this symbol and then instructed their flock to worship and idolize this caricature that they had created as well as Mary too. It seems that modern Christians forgot this verse in Deuteronomy 4.16. So do not corrupt yourselves by making an idol in any form whether of a man or a woman. This is also why in Mark 4, 11, 12, Jesus says to the 12 apostles, who as we know symbolize the other divine souls, that the Bible is written in parables so that those on the outside don't understand the encoded truths. This is because there are only so many mortal souls who pass judgment at the end of the great year. So to make it fair, they encoded these divine truths beneath the parables so that only those worthy of them would seek them out, knowing the majority would just listen to the priests, tell them what to believe, and therefore, because they had shown themselves to be unworthy, would be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding. And it's not one writer copying the other writer as biblical experts claim. It's each divine soul or apostle expressing these same divine truths in their own way. They did this as a way to preserve these divine truths because they knew that there would be a time when evil would proliferate the world and seek to destroy or take authority over these divine writings, which is what the Catholic Church did at the Council of Nicaea 17 centuries ago. So these divine souls, which as I said earlier, the four evangelicals also symbolize, wrote thousands of manuscripts encoded with these divine truths and dispersed them all around the world. 
Why else do you think the mythologies of so many cultures are similar? The flood story, the Mithra story, the returning of a saviour. And why else do you think the Catholic Church sent their minions out on a murderous rampage to find these sacred texts and either destroy them or bring them back to be locked up under the Vatican? So a way we can bring these fragments of divine truths together and understand what they were relaying is look to the symbolism because symbols are in of themselves also a language. We've already seen that the Zohar has connected the palm tree to the firstborn divine son of God, Abram, and his divine female consort, Sarai. But let's look at where else we see this symbol. And we don't have to look far, because if we look at the symbolic Christian artworks of Adam and Eve, we see that Adam is often shown leaning against a palm tree. Because yes, Adam is yet another symbol for the firstborn divine man, just as Eve is another symbol for the firstborn divine female. And then in this verse from Ezekiel, the palm tree is mentioned in relation to the cherubim. It was carved of cherubim and palm trees, a palm tree between cherub and cherub, Every cherub had two faces, Ezekiel 41.18. The cherubim are connected to the tribes of Israel and four creatures. But in this verse from Ezekiel, it also relays the symbolism of the cherubs having two faces, which is relating to the divine twin souls of the male and female Christed. Just as we saw in the verse from the Zohar about Abram and Sarai, and in the symbolic artwork of Adam and Eve. And we already know that the tribes of Israel symbolize the Christed, who are the direct divine descendants of the firstborn son of God, the Christ. However, if we look to the symbolic Christian artworks of the cherubim, we see they show the cherubim on wheels. This is denoting the great year cycle that the divine souls exist in, from the higher ages where they are illuminated and known as the divine children of God to the lower ages as we are in now where their divine portion has faded and they look no different to a mortal human. In this verse from Joel 1.12, it mentions the symbol of the palm with the other symbols that relate to the divine children of God and how as the ether recedes, and we descend down the ages of the great year into the lower and darker ages, their illumination fades, and with it, the peaceful and just times they presided over. The grapevine is dried up, and the fig is withered. The pomegranate, palm, and apple, all the trees of the orchard are withered. Surely the joy of mankind has dried up. And in this parable of the Atlanteans in Critias by Plato, he also relates how this divine portion in the Christed fades. A divine nature, all that which we have described, waxed and increased in them. But when this divine portion began to fade away in them and became diluted too often and with too much of the mortal admixture, and the human nature got the upper hand, then they being unable to bear their fortune became unseemly. To him who had an eye to see, they began to appear base and had lost the fairest of their most precious gifts. So now let's look at the connection of the palm tree to Jesus. The palm tree is only mentioned twice in the New Testament, once in connection to Jesus by name in the book of John and the other in Revelation connected to his symbol, the lamb. This is the verse from John 12, 13. So they took the branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. 
So this verse from John is the verse which all the millions of modern Christians pay attention to today and due to their lack of understanding regarding the symbolism have been reduced to a mechanical and mindless ritual of throwing palm fronds towards an actor riding a donkey down the street. In truth, the Bible verse actually says Jesus rides in on a colt. A colt is a young horse and this is related to the emergence of the newly illuminated or transfigured divine man and his return to his rightful position is being celebrated by the mortals who see the Christ and know he is a divine human as he appears different to other men. However, this changes in Revelation when the Christ is symbolized riding a horse. This is because now he is fully illuminated and has grasped the scepter of his divine power like a sword with the other three divine horsemen of the apocalypse. But the mortals aren't celebrating so much anymore because like the symbolism in the Hindu parable of Kalki the destroyer of filth and his three brothers, they have come to rid their father's kingdom of evil. This includes the Christian hypocrites who have been proclaiming the teachings of the Antichrist Catholic Church as the gospel of Christ. The other time the palm tree is mentioned is in Revelation 7-9, which is symbolizing the 144,000 mortals who have survived the apocalypse and who have been deemed worthy of entering the great new year with the Christed. They are now the ones who are holding the palm fronds, celebrating their triumph. It's no surprise that the head antichrist sitting on the papal throne at this very time didn't read out a homily at this year's Palm Sunday for the first time in history. Yes, these Antichrist God-haters know their days in power are numbered. It's always important to see beyond the rituals they use to obscure these divine truths. Symbols are a language and they will help you to uncover the truths that have been encoded beneath the scriptures and sacred texts. As the Zohar tells us, Doctrine are its cloak, the simple look only at the garment, that is, upon the narrative of the doctrine, more they know not. The instructed, however, see not merely the cloak, but what the cloak covers. And as the Christian scholar Origen from ancient Alexandria tells us, the learned may penetrate into the significance of all oriental mysteries, but the vulgar can only see the exterior symbol. It is allowed by all who have any knowledge of the scriptures that everything is conveyed enigmatically, i.e. esoterically.